Christine and Emma from Skills Development Scotland. Um, and I'll just tell you a wee bit about them. Um, Kirstine was previously a careers advisor within SDS for 12 years. She is the disability lead um, with um, Skills Development Scotland now. Um, Kirstine has an assistance dog um, with her this afternoon called Frankie. Um, and Kirstine undertakes a lot of voluntary work, particularly within the deaf community. Kirstjen manages three of the Challenge Fund projects focusing on tackling underrepresentation of young disabled people in apprenticeships. These three projects are Concept Northern, focusing on dyslexia, New College Lanarkshire, focusing on learning difficulties, and West College Scotland, focusing on autism. Kirstjen also assists with the administration of the Additional Support Needs Access Fund for the Employability Fund programs. Our second presenter is Emma Bolger. And Emma is one of the Equalities Advisors. Um, and she um, leads in gender, um, but also in all equalities areas. Emma is a qualified careers advisor. She has a, an academic background, working most recently for Open University in Scotland, both as a lecturer and a researcher. Emma is also one of the SDS co-funded PhD students researching gender and occupational segregation in modern apprenticeships. Emma leads on our external training for training providers and is developing new training initiatives for SDS staff and external partners. She's the National Training Programme's team contact for the Ayrshire College Challenge Fund project the West Lothian Pipeline Project, and for general equalities training. So I'm now going to move over um, and let um, Emma presentation. Hello, um, well, thank you very much again for your time for this, this, this Thursday. Um, the first slide there just gives you a little bit of introduction again to us and what we're talking about today. I want to cover what your obligations are, your support that you can give to SDS for equalities work and the difference that you can make as a college um, around the, the equality agenda for modern apprenticeships. So here today, as Suzanne has introduced us as myself, I lead on gender and also Kirsteen, who leads on disability within the Equalities team at SDS. We do have a wider team. We've all been in post now since September as the Equalities team for the national training programs. April Robertson has worked for SDS for, for a good while and has been leading on equalities within national training programs for a few years now. She is supported by Peter Hughes and Karen Murray is the head of our team. And we also have Nicola Swan. Nicola is another gender lead like myself and Peter Hughes for focuses on care leavers and minority ethnic groups. What we do for colleges is, is a very broad offer and we're working generally to support you to fulfill your contracting obligations with SDS, the contracting obligations around what, when you bid for modern apprenticeship places. We also target the uh, qualities areas of disability, minority ethnic, gender and care leavers and we'll be focusing on those throughout today's sessions. picture there of us so you can, you can imagine us in real life. It's important to consider for, us, for the very start of why qualities matters so much to colleges and to SDS. The main leverage that we have in this field is the public sector equality duties. And as a public sector organization, SDS is bound to implement them in relation to all of the contracting work we do with other organizations. So by um, process, right through the process of your contracting with us, if you're a training provider, you are taking on an extension of the public sector equality duty. As colleges, you're also already bound to that, so that is where much of the statutory requirement comes from. <laughs> 
The work that we're doing on equalities is very much um, following the recommendations that were, were laid out in the Commission for Developing Scotland's Young Workforce Report and what emerged from Scotland's Youth Employment Strategy. The expectations of our work as the equalities team with, with national training programmes is that we work towards the targets set out in the Youth Employment Strategy and those targets now present within the Modern Apprenticeship Equality Action Plan. And we have very specific KPIs that we're working to that have come out of those, those documents. You should be able to see on screen the Equalities Action Plan for Modern Apprenticeships in Scotland. There, there are some technical issues in relation to this showing today, so if you, if you can't see it, um, it will be downloadable after, after the, the end of this webinar. And just to remind you of what that document is, it is the, the main piece of paperwork that we are working towards in our team. It was launched in December of last year with a, with a ministerial launch around the the documentation. The Equalities Action Plan for Modern Apprenticeships in Scotland is very much the key piece of um, policy paper that we're, we're looking to, to focus on in all of the work that we're doing within, within the equality team. And towards the end of it, you will see that that is where the specific targets are laid out in relation to what we are working towards by 2021 across the four target areas that we have of care leavers, minority ethnic, gender and disability. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more then about the Modern Apprenticeship Equality Action Plan. The aim of the action plan is that we, we put down on paper exactly how we deliver to, to meet the, the equalities targets. We're looking at partnership working with employers, training providers, including yourselves, colleges, Education Scotland, our careers staff, specialist organisations and, and many, many more. And our aim is to develop what we call equalities pipelines, looking specifically as well to develop equalities pipelines on a regional basis in relation to what the challenges are in different regions across Scotland. We appreciate that there are, there are very different labour market and, and demographic challenges across the, the regions within Scotland, and that's something that we're looking to be much more responsive with in relation to, to the, the areas that your college may be in. So that's something to, to focus on. Next document, the next the next slide, sorry, is the just a, a visualization of the equality pipelines, and this also comes from the Modern Apprenticeship Equality Plan. You can see that we are focusing all of our attention across four very key transition stages and educational stages. We're looking, first of all, to, to start to work a bit more earlier in the pipeline, in the skills pipeline. We're looking to engage more in early years and at primary school level. And we have, for, for example, some of our Skills Development Scotland uh, careers advisors are now going in to work with, with, P7, with P7 pupils um, looking to address their, their concerns about career bias that, that presents very, very early in schools. We have our Institute of Physics project, for example, working as low as, as young as P1 in, in some primary schools to start to, start to, con to address what are the right jobs that, that boys should do and girls should do that early on. In secondary school, we're starting to work to, to alongside Education Scotland to make sure that people are making much more diverse subject choices and to make sure that we've got young people who are fully ready for the world of work. Then when we reach post-school transition, we're looking to ensure that we give clear guidance to young people to, to help them apply for their MA pathways, but also making sure that we're offering a broad career choice to every individual, that making sure that if there is a spark of interest in something that perhaps is a non-traditional career choice, that we're able to, to fully support that. And at the same time, we're starting to think about how we can build capacity for employers to recruit modern apprentices from underrepresented areas. Then we move on to sustained modern apprenticeship employment and thinking about what needs to be in place once a modern apprentice has started. Um, on, their, on their training course and, on, and in their work. And some of this activity might involve, for example, support groups for, for contact with role models, support groups for groups of apprentices in the workplace, and making sure that we're also thinking about if there are barriers to um, address in terms of um, simple things like how, how location of colleges and um, times of courses, things like that. Is there anything in the way that we can we can further help with at that stage? 
So to be a bit more specific about what we're trying to do, we are trying to address underrepresentation across equalities groups and to address gender segregation. We have very clear targets to, to hit by 2021, and they are to increase the employment rate for young disabled people to the population average. These the, the full the details of, of all of these um, targets and the statistics that back them up are in the quality action plan. Um, towards, if you go towards the end of the plan, you'll be able to see those specific targets. Um, for minority ethnic groups, again, we're looking to increase the number of MA starts and minority ethnic communities to match the population average. These are very, very fair targets that we, we have to, to focus on here. And we're looking as well to, to increase these year on year. We're not looking to, to reach a high target straight away. Um, we're looking to make sure that we do this in, in a progressive way and to, to readdress each year to, to look again at whether our targets are the right targets to be working to and whether we, we could increase them more quickly. Um, gender, again, we're looking to reduce the, the percentage of frameworks where we have a gender imbalance. And we're also looking to improve the number of care leavers who successfully take up modern apprenticeships. In relation to modern apprenticeships take up amongst care leaver groups um, and care experienced young people, at the moment we are still working to work out what the benchmark is. It's very poor data, as some of you, some of you may know, in relation to the number of care leavers who um, are accessing modern apprenticeships, um, the number of care leavers who take them up, we, we, we see it to be very low, but there's also limited data about the number of care experienced young people across Scotland anyway, so we're trying to work out what would be a reasonable um, baseline for us to start to work against in that area. So just moving on to what your obligations are, first of all, as training providers. And this is laid out in the instruction to bidders in the um, documentation that you will complete as part of the contracting process. It's it's in the, the terms and conditions um, of the of the contracting process and we can I say that the details on that can be downloaded after the webinar. But it's important to note that as well as fulfilling your obligations of part of the public sector equality duty. Um, we we also have um, some many, many other reasons for, for wanting to encourage you to, to work towards equalities. Um, for the first cycle of how we're going to work around um, encouraging equality action planning within the contracting process, we are looking at a very, very light touch in this first instance. Um, we're asking for completion of an equality action plan from July 2016 onwards. This was this was laid out in the, the contracting strategy if you, if you have bid in to be a provider for, for the 16-17 period. As I say, this is very much consultative. Um, we'll be looking at that action plan shortly, and I, I'm very, very open to, to finding out if you think there are any better ways to, that we could record your equalities activity. We want you to think about developing an equality action plan that reflects perhaps your college's equal opportunity policy as it is and how you might extend that to your to your modern apprenticeship provision. And we'd also maybe like to see how you're engaging proactively with your own existing equality of opportunity policy. We've got other offers to help you to help you to develop um, an, an action plan around equalities, and that includes we've offered free equality and diversity training to training providers and to our skills investment advisors, also known as contract managers, so that they can can better support you to to improve equalities. We're hoping to be able to share with you later on this year at a major event a, a large number of best practice examples around the equalities areas. While we have the four target groups, um, I'm also very much aware that we we are focusing on those four groups because we have um, an obligation to do so having having seen what, what has come out of developing the young workforce. But it's also important to note that we we hope that the improvements that we bring about in these four target groups will also help to create what is known to be a much more inclusive offer and a much more open offer for everybody looking to do modern apprenticeships. We know that there are other groups that don't fall into those those four target groups and we also certainly know that individuals in those groups are not a homogenous group. We do not see all women as just women. We do not see all people as just people with disabilities. We see everybody as part of, of the work, a much more inclusive and diverse workforce. 
We're also um, following some consultation we had with the Equality Challenge Unit, introducing an amended Equal Opportunities Monitoring Form, which will become available from the 1st of April, which we hope will improve disclosure rates around disability. One of the things that we, we know will help us to meet our targets in relation to disability is that we need to encourage greater disclosure amongst modern apprentices as to um, ensure that they're getting the right support whilst they're on their apprenticeship and to make sure that they get the right support before they start so that they have more confidence to undertake it. Um, we also have other methods of getting information out to yourselves and um, we hope, I hope that you're all signed up for the training provider newsletter which is our, our main route to, to pass on information about forthcoming inequality and diversity training and hopefully we'll be able to signpost you in the coming months a little bit better what else is already out there from, from specialist organisations. In addition to the, the support that we were already offering through through these, these, these methods I've mentioned. Um, further support comes in the form of the Equality Challenge Fund that we established in 2015. We offered some money out to um, all training providers to bid into to take some positive action in relation to equalities. Seven of the projects that bidded in for that fund are college partners who are attempting to take positive action in, in relation to modern apprenticeships. And they're developing very much best practice models that will be able to be shared amongst yourselves um, and with, with smaller training providers as well. We'll have a major dissemination and sharing event in June 2016, which you will all be invited to in due course. We will be able to hand over to you specific examples of um, toolkits, um, even simple as, as templates and, and processes and equality ideas that you can you can fulfill in your own in your own colleges. And just a, a quick note there again we have the specialist advisors that we do have, Christine for disability, myself gender, Peter, um, minority ethnic and care leavers, April covers everything, and Nicholas Swan for, for gender. Um, and we are led by Karen Murray who you, you may well have met at previous events. If you want to just send something, you're not sure if you to send it to, please do use the equality at SDS mailbox for all general equalities queries if you're not 100% certain. If you think that you have something that maybe falls outside of the four target areas that we have, please do still drop us a line and we can, we can see how we can help with that. Okay, so on screen now you should be able to see the template for the equality and diversity action plan that we have for 2016-17. This will shortly be available to download from after this webinar, but it's also available on Provider Central. So you can you can have a look at that after after the event. Um, we have created a very, very basic version here of the Equality Action Plan for 2016. As you can see, um, can we put up the bigger version of this? It might be a little bit easier to see the exemplar if we look at it. The Next one, next the table. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Um, you can have a have a quick look at this, and we're, we're still, we're still very much in development of how we're going to 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 use this this specific plan. But you can see we've got some very very straightforward um, actions that you could undertake in relation to demonstrating equality and diversity practice within your organisation. Um, worth noting when when you look at this form is that we're not really asking you to talk about what you have done. You know, staff may have done a course at some point in the past, and I'm sure that was of value. But what we're looking for is what you will do over the time in which you are um, contracted with us. So during the time that you'll be delivering the, the modern apprenticeships that you're offering. So if we just scroll down on that as well, you can see it's two pages, um, very, very simple um, actions and how they'll be undertaken, who will be involved in those within your organisation, the sort of evidence that can be shared afterwards. And in terms of evidence that can be shared, we're not just thinking about how are you proving that you're doing this, but um, evidence that could be shared with other training providers to, to help others to improve their own equalities offer. Things that can be, be very, very easily shared. And we're very flexible as well for, for timescales. We're looking just your, throughout the, the, the time that you contract with us.
Um, I'm going to hand over to Kirstine now, Mark, because what we're going to want to do for the for the, for the rest of the, the main body of this this webinar is we want to just talk through what some of the specific barriers, challenges, and then positive action are around the four target areas. And we want to give you some of well, first of all, why why are we doing this? Why are these these specific areas a challenge to us, and why do we need to do something about them in the context of modern apprentices? But also, what are some examples of positive action that's being undertaken? What sort of things might you want to put into your action plan for modern apprenticeships provision? And if we can just move on now to the slide for disability. Hello, everybody. For disability, we want people to be aware that people with disabilities, they yeah. don't just focus on what they don't just focus on what they can't do, focus on what they can do. They are, in my case, for example, I can't hear any of you, but I can still speak and I can still use the chat box. Some people, they're very afraid that they might be discriminated against when they apply for a job, so they don't disclose the disability at all. And in the case of a disability that might be invisible, like deafness or dyslexia, they might not see a need to disclose it at all. Unconscious bias from employers can make assumptions. That could be um, seeing someone with a tattoo, for example, and assuming that they're, they're violent when you haven't even spoken to them. So we have been offering unconscious bias training as part of our training to train providers recently. Some examples of action that can be taken to tackle underrepresentation for disabled people could be um, making reasonable adjustments for um, assessment practices. And for example, recently a young man who had autism was interviewed for an apprenticeship with ourselves and adjustments were made because he was struggling with group situations. You can promote access to work funding, which can pay based for reasonable adjustments. Things like text phones and coloured overlays, sign language interpreters can be covered by access to work funding. You can also like ease with disability organisations. So if you have a um, young person with, with a disability who would need some support, the need disability organisations can help you to support that young person to advise on the, the equipment and the support available. Employers can also sign up to the two tax scheme which is part of the DWP and that can be assure disabled people that um, that the employer is um, open to them applying and that they don't have to worry about, about disposing the disability. So if you want more information on helping disabled people into training or apprenticeships, then you can drop me an email address at the email on the screen. Okay. So, for minority ethnic groups, we are looking at cultural barriers and with vocational training or work-based learning. Uh, my colleague Peter Shoes is leading on um, ethnic minority groups. In some minority ethnic communities, parents and family have expectations for young people. For example, um, in Chinese communities, they can push a young person towards the university, but the young person might want um, might want to look at a different route. So there's family demands as well, and might not consider a partnership or training. In some geographies, family and community worklessness isolates young people from the labour market. So there might be language barriers as well that could prevent someone from um, considering employment. Now, some examples of positive action. A training provider can monitor data on a number of apprentices with engineering and construction, which highlights the minority ethnic learners underrepresented and underrepresented within engineering and construction. There could be further research undertaken. And the provider can also work with employers to address these challenges. 
such as Oricon Images, used in marketing materials, so that it's not just right name. So if you want some further information on positive action for minority ethnic groups, then my colleague Peter Hughes can help you with that. Okay, thank you, Kirsteen. Before we move on to looking at some of the, the practical examples that we can look at for gender, I want to show you, and uh, this, this is very much the premiere of this new, new case study video that we have um, about one of our modern apprentices who is a female modern apprentices a female modern apprentice working in a traditionally male dominated sector. My name is Hannah Muir, I'm an apprentice and I'm working for CCG Scotland. I decided to do a plumbing apprenticeship because I knew that everyone's going to always need a plumber. No matter what happens, plumbers are always going to be needed, so I'd never be out of work. I'm working in a housing project in Kamlaki at the moment. We're doing all the plumbing, so in the roughing stages right at the start, through to the finishings, like hanging the boilers, hanging the radiators, piping them all up, doing the kitchen sink and the bathroom suite. So we work on different sites throughout your four years in your apprenticeship. You're working with different people on every single site. There could be about five other tradesmen there that you're working with and each of them do things differently. So you're learning their ways of doing things and finding the easiest way for yourself. I've enjoyed working with different people, coming from many different backgrounds, younger people, older people, and just speaking to them and working alongside them. It's good knowing that you're getting up every morning and you're going to learn something new, you're getting paid for it, and you know that you're going to have a job at the end. My future is going to look really positive knowing that I've learned a trade for life. Hannah's been great, fun, young, she's keen, fresh, energetic, and, and it brings on other guys and makes you aware of having younger people around about you. I definitely recommend a modern apprenticeship. There's so many different apprenticeships you can get into nowadays. You're getting paid, you're learning a skill, and it's really, really good fun. Okay, so why are we focusing on gender? Um, gender, we know that the, the main causes of, of gender segregation are very, very long-standing and based within traditional cultural norms and very much out-of-date value systems. Unfortunately, a lot of these stereotypical views come from key influencers, parents, teachers, and, and peers around, and they, and they massively affect young people young women's career choices in skill subjects and jobs, but also young, young men's career choices. And what we're looking to do is, is to try and address that and encourage young people to make less stereotypical choices to move away from the traditional jobs for a boy and a traditional job for a girl. Gender segregation, however, in modern apprenticeships is very much a reflection of gender segregation in the wider labour market, so we have a very difficult job to do to, to rebalance that. However, modern apprenticeships are a good place to start with this challenge, and if we can start to redress it within modern apprenticeships, hopefully the workforce of the future will, will look slightly different to the one that we're used to. So for gender, the kind of positive action that you can undertake is, is quite broad. And we, we look to perhaps offer um, positive action examples that come from providing taster sessions that focus just to one gender. So for example, offering taster sessions within construction just to women or to offer childcare sessions that just focus on young men. The aim of sessions like this is to, to showcase the successful apprentices from these groups. We like to make sure that we have good role models who have succeeded in a sector that is not a traditional sector for them to work in. And we hope to then give learners information about the range of career pathways that are available to them. This is, this is very, very much an important thing to do because we think that one way to, to be able to give people, young people, the confidence to, to, to say that they want to make a choice that is perhaps going against what their peers or their family or their teachers expect of them. Um, we think that it's very much important that they have evidence to prove that they've met people who have done it and they've, they've heard about what those challenges might have been to succeed in that sector and, and are very, going into it very, very much informed. We have one of the Challenge One projects out at Asia College, which is based around a high-profile media campaign to, to promote female underrepresentation. Very much focusing on more, with the, using possibly the, the hashtag, what, what I actually do. And making sure that we present 
careers perhaps in the STEM sector as they are, but ensuring that we do so um, using a balance. We've seen teams at work that include an equal balance of male and female people in the workplace, and we should totally convey a realistic image of what that, that should look like. For any more information on how to undertake positive action for gender, please contact either myself or my colleague Nicola Swan. As I mentioned earlier on, for care leavers, we have difficulties in care leavers as well to, to consider the term care leaver and care experienced. We have difficulty in working out who the people are that we're talking about in this group. Um, we are currently including young people who are still in care and starting to think about their transition into work. Because care leavers and, and care experience is not a protected characteristic, we do have more difficulty in working out in, in being able to gather data on this group. We know that care leavers experience far more chaotic and disrupted backgrounds than, than their peers. Um, we also know that they can quite typically have additional and far more complex support needs, and we also know that financially, um, care leavers are, are often far worse off than, than the, the, the much broader cross-section of the community. We know that a care experienced young person leaving school and applying for but succeeding in, the, in, in their application um, and then completing and sustaining a modern apprenticeship is, is very, very unlikely. We're talking about very, very low numbers here. It requires a very clear and managed pipeline. So, for example, in-work support for, for care experienced young people to make sure that we offer sustainability, a very targeted and tailored pipeline of support has to be put in place for this specific group. We do have some examples, however, of positive action, even though this is very much a new group for us and a group in which we're only just starting to collect data. Move on, for example, is an employability fund provider that specializes in providing care experience young people opportunities in warehousing and distribution roles. The problem that existed for this organization that there were very few outcomes in terms of progression to jobs, and they themselves didn't have an MA contract. So it was difficult to, having given these young people good work experience. It was the question of where do we where do we move them on to? So what we've done is link them up with separate training providers by making sure that we're strengthening the relationship between employability fund and modern apprenticeship provision. Um, so making sure that training providers who offer MAs in, in the sect and in jobs in warehousing and distribution are able to offer posts on an ongoing basis. So as we have people leave in the employability fund, um, after their, their weeks on the employability fund, they can move on to a modern apprenticeship vacancy. So we're making sure that it's, there is a pipeline there and it's not just a work experience project that stops and then there's no post to go to afterwards. In terms of care leavers not being a protected characteristic, there are some things that can be done and we're still exploring what we can do around the phrasing of care leavers and, and care experienced in terms of advertising jobs and opportunities to, to target them more directly. Our, our lead on positive action for care leavers is Peter Hughes and his contact details are there below. So before we, we take a break um, and then I'll, I'll hand over to Suzanne shortly and we can, we can take any questions or any suggestions or any ideas, any examples of good practice and positive action that you have that you might want to share with us. I'd just like you to, to take a moment, if you've got a piece of paper, jot them down, to think about what you're already doing. We have Scottish Apprenticeship Week coming up next week. You may have some events in your own college around that that you're promoting. Um, but I'd like to know a bit more about what you're already doing and, and your best practice. If you do have anything that you'd like to still showcase for next week, it is not too late to get some events underway where all myself and my colleagues in the equality team are more than happy to come out and, and spend some time with you during Scottish Apprenticeship Week to, to help you showcase any good practice that you've got going on. And if you wanted to submit it to the Scottish Apprenticeship Week website, We'd be, we'd be delighted to see it there. But of course, if you do want something, you know, if you do have anything that you want to contact us about, please do contact us directly outside of, of Scottish Apprenticeship Week to, to get our support and we can see how we can help you to promote your, your own activity and your own positive action events. As I say, we'll have a major dissemination event for what's emerged from the Challenge Fund project later this year. That will be in June. And you'll, you'll, you'll have invites out to that soon. But for now, I'd like to pass over back to Suzanne so that we can we can sum up and, and ho pause recording for the day for, for this webinar. I hope it has been useful for you. And we'll take some questions shortly. Um, thank you, both Emma and Kirstin. Um, 
what those of you that are watching will not realize was that at um, one point, or well, at two points during the, the presentation, both Kirsten and Emma's screens just went blank. So they were able to see, luckily they're sitting beside each other. It didn't happen at the same time. They were able to look at each other's screens. Um, but that's a bit of the technical difficulties that we've had, which is odd because we've we've actually done quite a few webinars over the past few weeks. So, you know, sometimes these things just seem to happen for no reason at all. Um, so thank you to both of them for putting up with all of those technical glitches very professionally. Um, if they ever need a job in the radio, I'm sure that they can <laughs> they can cite this as a good example. Um, but anyway, if you do have any questions or comments, if you want to um, let us know what you're doing in your own college, um, would you please just put them in the chat box um, and we'll respond to that. Oh, we've got some people typing. There's always a bit of a hiatus in time, the time people type on their keyboards and it appears in the chat box. Okay. And Sarah, you're from Edinburgh College, yes. Good. Hi, Sarah. I'm, I'm managing this particular um, project with down at Ayrshire College. Um, we should have some of the videos coming out within the next um, sort of month or so, and they, they're having their final final points, you know, final final tweaks put to them, and they've they've very much used the the resources that they have on site. Um, what has worked for this is um, making sure that we've got out to some to have some really good site visits with quite high profile employers to do this, and that has been really really helpful um, in terms of getting people interested in looking at what's what's on there in the first instance. So we're making sure that we've got um, you know a day in the life type activities. So those those sorts of things as well to make sure that we can we can see what it is that people are doing on a daily basis. So um, I would say keep an eye. The best place to keep an eye on for for where that's coming out is um, the Ayrshire College website and the Ayrshire College blog. Um, I'm will be having a post on the Ayrshire College website and blog next week and there should be some some more information about the events and um, that we've got tied in with that with the marketing and promotion campaign for that coming up in the next in the next few weeks and hopefully I'm getting out to see one of the visitors to uh, visit one of the sites next week and um, to to show the filming to, to show the filming in action and also to be able to start to share some of the videos that are coming out of that Okay, you'll see I've just put up a question there which Kirsten has, has replied to um, to say that there's no date as yet for the June event but um, it should be getting confirmed soon. So that, that sounds really good. I think that will be a good event for just sharing what's been happening in the colleges. Anyone else got any comments or questions? No? Okay. Oh, hang on, Sarah.
first thing is just type in um, a reply to you there, Sarah. But one of the things that I would um, also draw some attention to is that we've had the a version of the Equality Challenge Fund now that's been running for employers to demonstrate that they're undertaking positive action in their own recruitment processes. The closing date for, for bids for that is, I think, 25th or today, which is also oh, 26th, which is tomorrow. And um, we have the closing date coming up for inquire for um, <laughs> Kirsten. Kirsten's typing just this at the moment. Um, but we we have the, uh, a good amount of um, interest from from employers, both small and large companies, getting in, in touch with us. Um, the quality, the full title is the Employer, Employer Equality Action Fund, as Kirsten has, has just put on there. And we're hoping that that will start to to show us where there are some examples of best practice coming from employers that we can get them to share as well. And um, completely appreciate that for for yourselves within the colleges. It may be that you're only Actually, your first contact with the, the modern apprentice may be after they've been employed by an employer already. So you're coming to it sometimes quite quite late in the process. But with that in mind, still starting to think about what, what activity you can do to make sure that the, the college is, is seen to be an, an inclusive and welcoming place for, for people who perhaps are from underrepresented groups, have made it onto a modern apprenticeship, and making sure that we keep them them on the, their apprenticeship in post and, and succeed and progress from, from level to level. Good, yes. Good, yes. I suppose it, it's it's a whole picture, isn't it? It has to start really from the very beginning, um, right up. And I, and I suppose the the work that um, Emma and Kirsten are doing at SDS um, is one part, really, of the whole process. Um, and it's hoped. Well, I would I would hope that if we really do the work with the the primary kids, you know, that that come the next. Ten years or so, um, there will not be any particular need for equality action plans. We would hope, but you never know. <laughs> 